Hello and welcome to Cake That's YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a yeast starter. But not just a yeast starter, I'm also going to show you how to culture up yeast. It's an amazing skill to have and it's just an amazing thing to know. Fermentation is the most important part of brewing. As they say, brewers make wort, yeast makes beer, but how can we give the yeast the best conditions possible for making the best beer possible? Having a good fermentation is the difference between making a beer where people drink and are like, oh yeah, this is a, this is a nice home brew, to wow, this rivals the best craft beer that I've ever had. And it really comes down to yeast health, uh, pitch rates, and how good the fermentation is, how clean the fermentation is. And an important way we can look after the yeast health and the pitch rates is to make a starter. And depending on the condition that your yeast is in, the starter might need different steps. If you've got an in-date pack of White Labs yeast or something like that, or you've got some yeast that you used maybe just over two weeks ago that you saved from your previous batch and it's been sitting in your fridge, that might need just one step to uh, wake it up and you know get the cell count up and so you can pitch it into your brew. However, you can also use starters for culturing up yeast. So what that means is, is that there are some commercial beers which are bottle conditioned. And whilst a lot of craft breweries will use readily available yeasts to us like US05, there are some other breweries which use their house yeast, which has been specially developed for them. Or you have some Belgian breweries, some Trappist breweries, for example, uh, they bottle condition their beers and they've got some really unique strains in there which can be uh, kind of difficult to get hold of. Or you might have a, you might find a wild yeast where the brewery has done some wild yeast project and they've captured this yeast and it gives the beer like a really, really distinct flavour and you want to put that in your home brew. This is how you would capture that yeast and use it in your own brewery. This technique is also really good if you have out of date yeast. So uh, for example, if you've got some White Labs uh, vials and it's been sitting in your fridge for months, even years, you can do these techniques to culture up the last remaining cells in there so that you actually get a pitchable rate and you don't waste your, your yeast. So throughout this video, I'm going to start by culturing up some yeast that I have, which is very old. It's been sitting in my fridge for months and months and I'm going to culture it up so it gets to a nice big cell count and the cells are healthy enough so that they can ferment a 23 litre batch. It's a pretty interesting yeast as well, it's a farmhouse yeast. You can do this with a bottle conditioned beer as well as I was saying or you can do it with a, an out of date liquid yeast pack. I'll let you know as well when I do the different steps when you would actually start at that step. Yeah, so I'm going to start by culturing up some yeast which is very, very dormant and not in a good state. But if you've got some yeast in your fridge which is only about two weeks old and you want to culture that up, uh, you wouldn't start at this stage, you'd start way further down. But I'll let you know and you can click the chapter markers uh, below to get to the stage which is suitable for you during this whichever brew you're about to do. I start off by getting my 500ml Erlenmeyer flask and sterilising it. I do this by pouring boiling water over and inside it, leaving it for about 10 minutes. I leave the stir bar inside the flask so it gets sterilised as well. I've seen some people cook the flask with the starter inside on a hob for 10 minutes, which also works, but I don't have access to a hob unfortunately. If direct heating your Erlenmeyer, be careful as it can break the flask. Whilst the flask is sterilising, I measure out the DME, or dried malt extract. At this early stage, we want the starter to have a gravity of about 1020, as this will gently wake up the yeast. We need to measure out about 10 grams of DME, which will dissolve in 200 ml of water. Empty the water from the flask and boil the kettle again. Using a funnel, pour the DME into the Erlenmeyer flask. It might need a bit of a shake to get all the DME through, then pour in 200 ml of freshly boiled water. If the measurements aren't exact, it's not detrimental, as long as you're close enough. 
DME is very sticky. It tends to stick onto things. So I was just using the water to dislodge it and get it into the Erlenmeyer flask. Then take a square of foil, spray it with ChemSam solution and cover the flask. I gave the flask a swirl to dissolve all the DME that was in there and I put it in my fridge to cool down to a temperature that I can pitch the yeast at. That jar of yeast on the fridge there is the yeast that I'm going to pitch later on today. It's been sitting in my fridge so I'm just letting it get to room temperature so that the starter and the yeast are at the same temperature. Once cool, I put it on the stir plate and I get the yeast. I spray it with ChemSam. If in doubt, add ChemSam. And I'm just swirling it to get as much yeast in suspension as I can. And then I pour it in. Uh, again, spraying everything with ChemSam. You can never use too much ChemSam when you're culturing up yeast like this. Then I pour the yeast in, the more that goes in, the better. I seal the Erlenmeyer flask back up and I let it stir for a couple of days. Yeah, you can never really go too far by spraying things with chem sand because you don't want to be culturing up the wrong kind of bug, the wrong kind of yeast. You want to keep it as pure as you can and you can't really go over the top with sanitization here. After a few days, it should look a bit like this. I'd be surprised if any Krausen appears at this stage. It's now time to step up the starter and add in 250 ml of 1040 starter. This requires 25 grams of DME to 250 ml of water. I've gone a little over here, but it's not the end of the world. The water has been boiled in the kettle and I poured it straight in. I dissolved it, covered it and let it get to room temperature. I'm doing all of this in a separate container because otherwise I would probably just kill all the yeast with the boiling water. Again, spraying everything with ChemSan before putting it near the starter and you can never <laughs> use too much ChemSan. Once it's cooled down to room temperature, I pour it into the existing starter. The flask is, as you'll see, it gets a little full, but at this stage it isn't really Krausen either, so it should be okay. Ideally I'd use a bigger flask at this point, but I don't really have one. It goes back on the stir plate for another couple of days. This is what starter number two looks like after two to three days and it's time to step up again. This is the stage you'd start at if you want to wake up a pack of yeast which has been sitting in your fridge for a bit longer than you anticipated or if you need to grow a yeast pack which is still in date or if you've harvested some yeast from another brew which is older than about two weeks. At this stage we're making a 500 ml 1040 starter. I've got a bigger flask now and sanitized it with boiling water as explained in step one. And I'm measuring out 50 grams of DME. It gets a bit sticky and unwieldy, but water will wash it off. I'm pouring in roughly 500 ml of freshly boiled water and giving it a swirl so the DME dissolves. When using DME, something to remember is that if you want a 1040 wort, it requires 10 times the amount of water to DME. So if you want a 500 ml of 1040 wort like we have here, then it's 50 grams. And this is just good to know because if you want to step this up further, you know how to do that. Or if 500 ml might be a bit much in some situations, you know how to shrink it. Again, cool it down to room temperature and then pour the contents of the existing starter including the stir bar, into the big Erlenmeyer flask. Remember to spray with ChemSan, as always. It's possible to do the whole thing in a larger flask if you'd rather, 
I just didn't have my larger flask available when I started this. Cover up with foil and then place on the stirrer and wait for another couple of days. After this stage, and this is about two to three days later, there should be some krausen to show the yeast is fermenting. And there's a small krausen ring on here. If you're making a lager or a clean West Coast pale ale, I'd recommend stepping it up to a litre. For other beers, these should be pitchable. As always, spray down the sides and then pitch into the wort. And this is what the brew looked like about 15 hours after pitching. If you found this video useful, please do like, please subscribe if you haven't already, and thank you very much for watching.